computer. Okay. Okay. So um, again, to get it on the recording, uh, and Sister Paulette, you're right, exactly, is that um, hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting scripture. It gives you the principles. How you use those principles is called exegete. How you use the principle is exegete, or some pronounce it exegesis. Okay, can someone name some other biblical sciences besides hermeneutics and, and exegete? Name one or two more uh, biblical sciences. We're still in you, chapter you one mean, for the uh, yes, apostle. Uh, no, I thought you were talking about homiletics. I'm sorry. No, okay, let's, we're looking for two more um, biblical sciences. Okay, textual criticism and historical criticism. Remember that? Yes. And, yes. and the canonizing. That may be on page, uh, I think it's on page six. Go to page six and highlight that because you want to know those other biblical sciences. And you remember what it says about textual criticism. Look at what it's, how the difference between textual criticism and historical criticism. Textual criticism is uh, pretty much you're, you're looking at breaking down the words, what's being said, how it's being said. Historical criticism, you're pretty much breaking down um, the author, the, the date in which it was written, who it was talking to, anything that deals with history. Remember the word criticism does not mean the same that as we use it today. It's pretty much it's the study of. The study of, uh, uh, of the text or the study of history. Okay, so again, we're just doing just review tonight. We, now, in chapter two, it talked about the qualifications of an interpreter. And again, all the qualifications of an interpreter are pretty much the qualifications of, of anyone that's pretty much born again. So there is no questions on in the test that has uh, that's coming out of chapter two, okay? There is no question that's coming out of chapter two. And that's important. Don't, so you don't be wasting your time looking in chapter two for an answer that's not there. There is no, I'm just repeating it again. Chapter two, there, it, there are no questions that that's going um, on your test. Now, we did talk about the methods of interpretation, the allegorical method, the mystical method, um, and we did talk about the devotional, the rationalistic method, but the main method in which we interpret God's word is the literal method. And but, and I put the but there, but the literal does not exclude the figurative, does not exclude the spiritual meaning, does not exclude application, does not exclude depth, but it's still the literal interpretation is our main method of interpreting. But sometimes people think when you say literal, it excludes debt and spiritual meaning. No, it can still include that. I'm trying to take my time so you guys, I know you guys are writing this down. And remember, it's going to be on the recording. Now, I want to say this, that a lot of our, re our recording, this recording will not only be on uh, YouTube, but it will be on our fake, uh, no, excuse me. It will also be on your the school website. I need you guys to get used to going to the school website because that's where you're going to start going uh, to start registering for your courses. Not to pay, but just say, this is the course I'm taking. Dr. Short, this course I'm taking. So you're going to have to log in with your name and email address. We're getting a little more professional. We are growing. So, um, so that way I know exactly who's taking the course before we get to the class. Okay, but we'll talk about that later. Yes, Sister Paulette. Yeah, what's the name of the website? Nationalschooloftheology.com. Oh, okay. And everybody needs to visit that website at least, I say once um, every, every two weeks or so, because that's going to be, I, I, there's even a blog on there. I have blogged, I had various teachings on there. Just like I do on YouTube, 
there's going to be more fresh uh, blogging that I'll be doing every week. I have a fresh blog on there for the students. And only you guys will be able to get to it because I'm putting a lot where you can only have, you have to have a password that I'll get to you guys or you have to use your email and your name in order to get in. So our website has been uh, upgraded as we speak. I'm putting some good money into that and I appreciate you guys sewing into into the school and we're putting it to work. Okay, so now remember, there is no questions in chapter four. We didn't even study chapter four. Remember, that talks about the history of hermeneutics. But we did get into chapter five, okay? Um, now, in chapter five, there's a whole lot that possibly could be on the test. There's a whole lot that possibly could be on the test. One is um, talking about the get, uh, first of all, it breaks down the three languages that the Bible was written in that's no longer being used. Can someone tell us that? Ancient Hebrew, ancient Kohen Greek, and ancient Chaldee or something like that. Or something like that would be right. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody should see that in your book. Okay, you should see that on chapter five, right up to the top. Where it said linguistic uh, gap. Uh, it talks about the gaps there. So one of the gaps, and we talk about those gaps. I believe there's four gaps. We got the linguistic gap, which is nothing more than the language gap. We also have the culture gap. You don't have to write this down. Just make it make sure it's highlighted in your book. But it's up to you. That's how you want to do it. The geographical gap and the historical gap. Those four gaps. Why are those four gaps important? Anyone might take some time out. Why understanding those gaps are crucial before we get into principle? Mm. Mm. Um, Dr. Short, this yeah. is Julie. Um, I'm thinking that, um, well, cultural, cultural language gap, different words, one word can mean something different to a, a person in a different country or a different area, or even dialect, where it may be the same language, but the dialect is local to that particular <laughs> group of people and they they don't understand each other so um so i think a language a, a gap and a, a geographical could also be cultural too because a different country a different a different language is spoken and uh the meaning of the word might not be the same as what was meant in the three original languages Amen. Amen. So, so again, those gaps are actually gaps. They're gaps that could hinder our understanding, our interpretation. And so there's a gap of time, there's a gap of space, there's a gap of culture, gap of language that's different than ours. And, and so interpretation must consider, again, those gaps in order to get the proper understanding. Now, as we leave the gaps, now we go into principles. Now, these principles have one major thing that just about all of them say, and I'm saying just about, not every one of them, but most of them say the same thing, that these principles must be used in consideration of interpretation. So do not force something that's only to be considered into every interpretation, only to be considered. So the, the first, uh, so, so what we have here is the context principle, the first mention principle, comparative mention principle, the progressive and the complete mention. All of these are to be used Again, it's only to consider them. There are times you won't be able to compare a topic or a subject with nothing. 
because maybe it's only mentioned one time in the Bible. That's nothing to, to compare it to. As far as complete mention, maybe it's mentioned one time in the Bible. So there is no prog so there is no progressive at all because it just mentioned it one place in the Bible. So every scripture that doesn't have a progressive because there are some things that God did and God said that um, he only said it one time, said it to wrong group, group of people, and that's it. But sometimes we'll take that one thing God said and try to bring it through multiple dispensations into our time when God was talking to that person at that time and he only said it one time. Uh, for instance, and uh, I think it's the book of Exodus. God told Moses to make an holy oil. And he gave him five remedies to make this holy oil. He told him about the co uh, the calamus. Go get the calamus plant. The, um, it was the cinnamon tree plant. And he named three more plants. Uh, the casa. And uh, I'm trying to think of the other two. But he told them to make take those plants. And make those and make that holy oil. And each of those plants had five powerful symbolic meanings to them. But God never told nobody else to do that. No one should be going and trying to mix up their own holy oil. We bless the pure oil, and that's it. Moses was the only person that God told to mix up some stuff. That's why you got some people. That, that you got to be careful who laying hands on you because they got their own little concoction. <laughs> Anyone else? Question, comment, or statement before we go any further? Where was yes. that in, in the book? What chapter was that? The, what you just mentioned about the oil? What chapter was that in? Oh, no, that, this is not in the book. I'm just giving oh, you... Oh, okay. I thought I didn't remember reading that. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah, you threw, threw a new one on us, did you? No, no, no. I'm just letting you know that there are times that God will say one thing, and he's talking to one individual, and he's not talking to the whole race and I, to the whole world. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And that was Moses that I was referring to. But I think it's in Exodus, the 20th chapter. It might be. If it's not Exodus 20, then it's Exodus, I, I'm thinking the 32nd chapter, maybe 20th verse. But I, I had to look that back up because that will come out in one of our courses called Understanding the Anointing. And that's going to be a powerful course when we teach that because you're going to learn about those, uh, those five different plants and their symbolic meanings, very powerful meanings. Okay, so now, now when it comes down to the test, um, we're not going to go any further than chapter 10 in the test. So your mid-test will not go any further than chapter 10. Okay, so, so, so therefore... Don't be looking for an answer. I mean, you still might can find it in chapter 11, but make sure that um, you try to stay within the confines of one through one through. Is there anybody that's done the test? I haven't looked on Flex Quiz. Dr. Short, when do we get the test? Uh, I sent it out um, several days ago. But I didn't send out to everyone. I just sent it out to a few. I didn't, so everybody didn't get the test yet because it's not, and it's not due till Sunday in a way. So you're, everybody's good. So if you guys, several of you guys didn't get it, don't worry about it. I was looking at it and I sent it out because two people, a couple of people didn't mention it. So I just went ahead and just sent it out. But I'm quite sure they looked at it and like, hmm, I don't think I'm ready yet. <laughs> so, uh, but okay. So now, do you have any? Because I'm going to send it. So when we, this is going to be a uh, quick class because I'm going to make sure everybody got the test, even though I'm going to send it twice to some of you and you can start doing your test. I would love to have it done by Sunday. But because uh, I'm letting you out of class, why don't you just go ahead and jump right on and get it done so we can move on? How about that? Okay. So so I can grade it and get back with you if something's wrong. Because that's the thing. If you get something wrong and you're going to see the computer market right or wrong, uh, uh, allow me, give me a day or two and, and I'll go over your test. I want you to know why it's wrong. Um, but again, I'm not 
I'm not saying all that because I think the test is hard. I don't think it's hard at all, but of course I would think that way. So I know that's what, I know that's what some of you said. See, I read your mind. <laughs> I was just thinking. Very yeah. good. That's what I told you. Very good. I'm prophetic, man. Don't mess with me. <laughs> you got to watch out for you. <laughs> so, but in, a, in a way, so... Okay, so I'm tr and the main thing you guys did answer uh, did a good job because out of this course, I, I know it's gonna it sounds crazy. It's only about five things so far. I really need you to know, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna mention them one more time. You need to know the pronunciation of hermeneutics. Okay, <laughs> that, that's important to me. That's really important because you're coming from the school, and I don't want you to talk to someone and mispronounce it. And I said, Doctor Short, I ain't going there, please. Uh, but anyway, the pronunciation <laughs> is crucial, and I know I can kill some words myself, so I'm not picking on you. Um, so know know the pronunciation and know the uh, definition, the art and science of interpreting scripture. That's crucial. And, and also, it's all about this word. Most of those five is about this word. And then know the difference between hermeneutics and exegesis. If you, if you do those things, know those. I, I'm good because you're gonna you're gonna understand the principles because you already recognize the wait a minute all the principles the uh, the definition of the principles is in the name you know the complete mention you know in consideration for the most part and so we're gonna after so this is our fifth week so the fifth week you're doing your test we have three more weeks to get through this book and so next so next Wednesday we're gonna be I'm gonna be pushing you guys so after you do this test. Um, again, just skim through the rest of the chapters, uh, one through, I mean, excuse me, 11 through 16 or so, look through them. And then we're going to get going because we've got to get to chapter 24. I think it's 24 chapters, if not 22 in this book. And, um, and so, but again, it's not the hard. If, if you look at how the author has put it, it's a really make it very simple for you to understand. And I think as you read this book, it'll start coming to you. You'll start comprehending it, start understanding it. All you got to do is just read it. And, and for the most part, you'll get it. But if not, that's what I get paid for is to teach. Any questions, comments, or statements? I didn't know you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still dreaming. I'm, I got, don't ruin my dream. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, let me see here. So, I'm gonna. Okay, so I'm. Uh, who's not here? Sister Ann is not here. Okay, um, and I see a couple, one or two more people that's not here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. Excuse, uh, me. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Emma, Sister, Emma. Sister Emma, she's here. I'm here. Uh, oh, uh, okay, okay. I, I keep forgetting that she's with you. Okay, and okay, okay. So I'm going to make sure if you don't get this test in the next hour, call me, okay? Call me because I'm right here on my computer. And if I don't get a call in the next hour, then I know that you uh, that uh, everybody's got it and everybody's good and you're probably getting right down into it right now. I can't think of nothing that's on that test I need to go over because, um, and I don't think there's no trick questions on the test at all. Just take your time and read it carefully, okay? Don't rush through it. Even though I'm saying it's easy, a lot of times we mess up on easy stuff because like, oh, you say, oh, I knew that. Yes, no, but we rushed it. Don't rush it because you have till Sunday. Well, I would like some of you get it done tonight or tomorrow night. That allows me to. Now let's talk. Now let's uh, talk about classes and, and all this stuff. January the fifth, and is uh, when we're starting. We'll be done this class in December. You'll have about a week or so off. You have a little a little space before your next class. So we have three more classes uh, starting. So you'll be we'll be done this right before Christmas or right, yeah, right before Christmas, we should be done. Um, and so your next course that's going to be taught on Wednesday night is the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That's what it's called. 
but there's never been taught in the National School of Theology before. Uh, well, it's being taught now uh, at another at one of my other schools, but this is the first year we ever used this, and and the response that we're getting, the students are loving it. And uh, this is by I think Vernon Maxwell, I think is his name. What was he called? Twenty one what? Irrefutable laws of leadership. Someone type that in. His name is John Maxwell. Is it John Maxwell? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, thank you. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And it's by John Maxwell. Anyone know Maxwell? He does an excellent job, right? He's been writing uh, uh, forever. So he does, you know, you know you're going to get some good stuff from him. Okay. Also, oh, it's a good feature. It's a good study. Yes. Uh, also, uh, excuse on, me, Dr. Short. Is this yes. going to be mainly, is this going to be mainly an ebook? No, this is a hardcover book that has to be purchased. So that's why we're letting you know early. So go to Amazon. And, and Dr. Short, yeah, yes. also because it has it has the book, it has a workbook, it has, um, oh, I forgot, there's a, a couple of different books he put out with this 21 Infutable Laws of Leadership. And so you have to know exactly which one you want uh, everybody to get. Okay, what I, this is what I'll do. Um, I, I know I don't. I know it's not the workbook. It's just the main, the book itself. It it will let you know. The workbook will let you know it's a workbook. So it's just the book itself. You will not need the workbook. Okay. Um, now, um, see that that's that's the fifth of January. Now the third of January is going to be Christian ethics. That will be an ebook. That will be an ebook. Christian ethics will be. Um, Christian ethics. You're learning about morals. You're learning about, um, and I know this is gonna sound so simple. You're learning about what's good, what's not good, um, and it's not what you think. And learning about right because what somebody call right um, hmm, may not be what you call right. What someone call good may not be. We call good. So we're so actually when it comes down to moral and Christian ethics, we're actually gonna learn what God says is right compared to our own definition and beliefs. Uh, you're gonna look at contemporary issues. We're gonna be talking about contemporary issues of the time. When it comes down to contemporary issues, you're doing what's going on. I'm trying to see. Okay. Um Okay, when it comes, we're talking contemporary issues. What will be a contemporary issue of today? Some of the music. Abortion, abortion. Okay, abortion is always a contemporary issue, yes. Uh, and music is always uh, one somewhat, but it's nothing new. But what's, what would be new, a, contem a contemporary issue? The pandemic. Let's go, oh, pandemic. The, the, the pandemic is new. So that would be your number one. Politics is a contemporary issue because it's constantly changing. You have different leaders, got different issues. So that could be it. So contemporary contemporary issues, what you do as a as a study, you're learning how does the church handle politics? How does the how should the church handle uh, the subject of of homosexuality? Homosexuality. <laughs> yes. How does the church? So it. it so this study pretty much tell you what, as a Christian, where we shall stand on these issues. And it's, again, uh, some people feel like, well, as a Christian, you should be a Republican. As a Christian, you should be a Democrat. As a Christian, well, well not necessarily. So we're, we're going to study because the only side that we know that's right is God's side. So, um, so, so that'll be a course. That, that'll be on Monday, but the, I mentioned two courses. One is contemporary issues and the other is Christian ethic. They're very, very close. You're gonna have one or the other. I will know by the weekend and everyone's gonna get an email. Also by the weekend, go to the nationalschooltheology.com. You're gonna see all the courses that we're gonna be taking for the next few months. So it's gonna always be listed there. It may ask you for your name and email address on there in order for you to get in. So if it asks, please give it. So that way I can keep up with who's coming to the site and uh, who's being 
I mean, yeah, because that's where most of your stuff is going to be found at. Yes, it's about that. You said one was January the 3rd and one was January the 5th, that they're two days apart from each other. So which one is the next course? Okay, the next course for you is on the 5th, the 5th, uh, <laughs> the 5th, yes. And that's the, in, I can't even spell it. In, in, in irrefutable in, laws, yes. Yeah, well, you're not by yourself, I can't spell that, I can say it. <laughs> Every repeatable laws, yes. Repeatable laws, okay. U T A B. Yeah, so, but again, you don't have to take two courses. You can just take one. Or if you want to take both, that's fine. We'll work with anybody that want to take both. Um, and so, but that's what you saw. The third, again, we're doing Christian ethics and or um, contemporary issues. And the fifth, we're doing the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Uh, we will Excuse not, me, Dr. Short. Yeah, Excuse me. Uh, now you will not be teaching these. No, I will be teaching Monday, but okay. uh, I'll be teaching Monday. The person that's teaching the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership has taught it before. I've never taught it. I'm going to let them go with it because I think they're doing an outstanding job in the school that they're teaching right now. Dr. Uh, Short, can I spell irrefutable? Sure. It's I R R. <laughs> I R R E F U T A B L E. Okay, one more time. I R R E F U T A B L E. And his name is John C. Maxwell. I know because I have the books, I am teaching it online. Okay, good. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so Dr. Let's, Shore, yes. Dr. Short, um, the, the class on the third in Christian ethics, the ebook, will we get uh, um, a message about uh, uh, yes. Matter where fact, we I'm go gonna send to that, download it? Yeah, well, I'm going to send that to everyone, and I'm going to send that to everyone in a way. And also, it's also going to be... Um, there should be a link when you go to the web. The website won't be done till tomorrow night. So don't, you can still go there now. For those of you who've never been there, you need to go there now and look at it. But it's going to be more stuff there after uh, Thursday night. Um, so uh, then I need a couple of days to load things on there. Like some of the videos are going to be loaded on there. The courses got to be loaded on there. Links to different things are going to be loaded on there. There's going to be uh, a lot of good sites. Uh, so, uh, links to where to find uh, good teaching on apologetic is going to be there because I teach out apologetics press. So a link just if you can't think of it, let me go to the web, let me go to the school website and click on the link. It's right there. Uh, Sermon Central, I get a lot of stuff from there. There'll be a link go right there. Um, and so a, a lot of my little places I like to go and study and research, you're going to find on the school website. And uh, so um, and also for those of you that you will see a globe at the bottom and some at the top and, and the globe will actually you if you're no matter where you're at it's gonna uh it's gonna let me know that someone from you know south carolina north carolina is on if you're from delaware it's the globe you'll see your state pop up and that's more than likely you uh, that's that's on the site. Sometimes I go on there, I see people from Michigan, Iowa, um, Africa, uh, different parts of the world that's on there. So when you go on there, you can see this globe. You can stop the globe. Put your finger, well, you can stop the globe and blow it up. And you look at all the places where people are visiting the National School of Theology all over the world. How you blow it up? You can, you should make a larger screen. My, I have a touch screen. I can just touch my screen and just spread my fingers and it'll open it up. Yours, you'll probably have a pad on your tablet and it should, you should be able to cause it to spread so you can see it better. It's a show, you should be able to um, do that. Um, but I just want you to see where we're reaching at. The East Coast is packed full. So from, from Maine to Florida, it's nothing but red dots, but you'll see it gets thinner as it goes to, towards California. And you see a little, several little spots throughout the world. And that's where people are checking out the National School of Theology. And uh, come back in a couple of months, I'm hoping we'll see them dots double. Because right now we've got two 
We've got two people in Georgia alone this month that's interested in opening up a school of theology out of Georgia. So the school is picking up very, very quickly. So we've got for so for, so we're looking at January. January, we got Apostle Davis. Uh, we have Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, we have the two in Georgia. Uh, we have Buffalo that should be opening up. A lot is going on in the National School of Theology that are starting the first of the year. So stay tuned, stay connected to the website and um, to continue to pray because we believe that we want to be an example to your leaders and, and um, different ones that if God is for you, he's more than the world against you. And I believe that if God is, is with you and for you, we should be growing. I, I truly believe that, Amen. that whatever you put Amen. your hands on, that it's, something should be growing around you. If not number wise, your anointing should be growing because numbers don't always tell the story. But something mm. should be growing. <laughs> Everything should be dead around you. Something should be living. Amen. 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 May I ask another question, Dr. Short? Yeah. When Apostle Norman Davis opened up his school, what will his subject be? He, Apostle, did you um, share that already? Didn't you do a flyer on that? He did. That's a flyer he's got out on um, that. He'll have to send that to you. He hears you. He should. Yes, it's there. Deal with the glory of God. Oh, that would be nice. The glory of God? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you're short, this is Julie. Um, I have a question. Uh huh. Uh, related to our degree. Uh -huh. I really haven't had a chance to um, ask you this, but I, it's probably the obvious at this point. But what would you expect a student with our degree, associate's degree in biblical theology? What would you expect that person to be, how to use it? Oh, okay, that, that's a good question. Uh, on that level, uh, if you have um, that level, you should be able to um, really do an excellent job of interpreting God's word. You should be able to expound um, your preaching and or your teaching. Should, there should be whoever's over you should see uh, a difference in you and how you articulate or if you're in, involved in Sunday school, involved in Bible study, but if you're not involved in nothing, then you have nothing to showcase what you've been learning. But mm -hmm. if you're involved in things, some people are going to recognize, you know, uh, your growth. They're going to recognize, you know, that don't mean that you go out there and just start spitting off harmony, just telling, you know, and all this, showing off with it. But but if you're in your if you're in your church Bible studies, if you're active in your church, uh, it, 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 there are things that will show off. So on on that uh, level, associate uh, the social level, again, you should your knowledge just on that level should surpass anyone in the church that don't go to school. And I, I'm sorry to say this, but it's probably any pastor that hasn't been to school, you know more than the average pastor. And I'm going to say this, 97% of the average black pastor don't have no education. So I'm saying this is that so you know will know more than many, many pastors. So that's what the, that's what you're getting. And what I'm expecting you to do is allow God to use that knowledge. Now, now I'm not just because you have an associate and you have more knowledge than 95% of most of the people in our country. And, and that's sad to say, but, but again, um, when I look at the statistics, it, people that go to school is such a small percentage. You're doing something that most of the world isn't doing and, and you're learning that, but don't let your learning be in vain. That's where you want to go to God person. Yeah. God, what do you want me to do? Uh, elder, doc, soon to be Dr. Dina Brown. She's hosting most of a, uh, multiple Bible studies on, 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 online. Uh, Apostle Gladys is doing Bible studies. She's already teaching the 21 area feet of the laws. Uh, Apostle Norman Davis, he does clubhouse. So uh, so there are ways to use what you're getting. There are, there are social um, 
societies out there, I call it that, that will allow you to be able to utilize your gift and nothing more. You can do something at home, have a home Bible study, invite your neighbors, your friends over and meet once a week. But a, a lot, but that's where God has to allow you to do uh, what he's called you to do. But there are so much, so many ways that you can uh, uh, utilize your, your uh, associate's degree because already you're more knowledgeable than so many people that hasn't been to school at all. Yes, I understand. Thank you. What I'm interested in, and in where I live near Myrtle Beach, um, we have many senior citizens, mm -hmm. and um, there are assisted livings popping up all over the place. And what I've been thinking about is possibly presenting a program for residents who are interested in um, in uh, spending time learning the you know reading the Bible and sharing and that sort of thing. So that's kind of where I was thinking. But this has just kind of popped into my head. So I'm going to let God decide what He wants. Yes, for that's me a, to do. Amen. Thank you. Thank amen. You so amen. Because again, that's what God God has to do. That I can give you tools, but He has to give you the ministry, and you know. So, <laughs> so uh, amen. But that was a very good question. I hope everyone got something out of that. Amen. And then I was also looking at Sister Sister Myra is here, and she has a ministry that she does. Um, she she does. I believe she does various teaching, and she also has various guests. So there is something for everybody to do. I'm so glad that all you guys do that because too many people run into the pulpit. That's more than just the pulpit. That's a way of reaching you besides running behind the pulpit. You know, there's uh, there's still street ministry. I know very few people that's not interested in that because you don't get paid at all. Just don't get the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, you know, you can't better minister to the homeless. They're not going to cash out you nothing. So, you know, and that's sad, but we need people out there uh, that's doing that. So in nursing homes, where you're talking in nursing homes is a, is a great place, especially if you're young in ministry. That what There you can go there. You can, you know, have your little, get your nerves together and build yourself up and, and as you're working with them. And then mm -hmm. as you do great with them, you never know, it may, may elevate. Uh, Dr. Catherine Bohannon, one of our teachers on Thursday night, that's where she's been doing that for years, going to the nursing home. That's where she got one of her first starts working at the nursing home. So we know because of the pandemic that they cut a lot of things out. But hey, look into it. They might in some places are opening back up as school has and see what's, you know, uh, what's available out there. But I'm quite sure that's much. Well, I've enjoyed this conversation. Any more personal conversations, call me tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So we love you because I want you guys to start this test. That's what this is all about, getting you out early. So you can start this test. If you don't get the test in the next hour, please call me or text me. Let me know, Dr. Short, I did not get the okay. test. Okay. Okay, Father Ray. Okay, now. thank you. Now, Sister Judy, I'm gonna call you. Sister Judy, I got to call. Sister Julie, I got to call you in a way yes. right after we hang up. So stay close to your phone, please. Okay, very okay. good. Okay, thank Father, you. right now in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for how you bless us. We thank you, God, for how you're uh, just allowing us to learn how to use what we know. And God, I thank you for the question. I thank you for, dear God, those that are going into ministry in this class in the next coming months. God, we ask you to bless those ministers. God, God bless those that's, dear God, that has those degrees and teach them and show us how to use what we got in order to get what we want. God, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints of God. Amen. And we'll see you amen. Um, amen. next week. Bye-bye.